Okay, today I'm just going to quickly show you some EQ stuff again. So usually how this goes down is um, people wonder, like, what do you do when you EQ stuff, right? Um, uh, like, like when you have, like, a bass sound or something, like, what do you do when you EQ it? 20 point. I need I need to get the 64 bit wig. It's uh, getting laggy. But so yeah, I have the sound. I just made it quick and massive. You can stare at it here. It's just like LFO with bending one and such. I think there's um That actually sounds a bit better. Then I added FX to it. I don't know what's happening to my Facebook right now. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, and then I'm gonna go on to EQ this. So I'm gonna use FabFilter Pro, uh, Pro Q2, and I'm going to. Wow, it's coming through really loud on the in here, eh? Actually, doesn't really matter. Anyway, so this is what we got. So there's two ways you can very like mix your mix your bases in a good way. So this is how I do my bass mixing. So what I basically do, basically, haha. Um, is uh, I like to take some stuff away from 200 hertz. You have to find the sweet spot. And I like to cut some stuff as well at like um, 200. Maybe we'll slide this around. Boost the high stuff usually. And just see what generally needs to be done with it. Now I've gotten rid of all the bass, right? So when I actually use this in context, I usually add in a sub, a separate sub. I don't know why I typed in sub. And uh, I don't do it in this. I do it in massive, depending. And it's just gonna be like a sine wave. I actually do like three sine waves. And uh, I like move their amplitude up a bit. One's at a fifth up. And one's at an octave. Why can't I um 
Yeah, that was weird. And you hear it a bit, and then maybe, like, I don't know, put them together. With a tiny bit of compression. And then I add my pitch mod, just in case I need it. And I And I usually copy whatever MIDI I have for like a bass note at the time to this. So this is too high, so it's gotta go down. And I throw on top of this and it's like. Instead of it being where it was before, where if I didn't have this or any EQing, it would sound like this. Sounds like cleaner, I guess, but like without it, it sounds. And if you put this, there's still some bass stuff that interferes with like the fundamental tone. So, like, usually putting it somewhere around 200 is good. It's that subtone that makes it, like, really good. That's my example. Uh, we could grab, like, a actual... Base, like a, like I guess a bit like a different one. Let's use something from Virtual Riot, like a um. Let's come in here, and I'll uh, just copy this stuff and throw it on here. Probably doesn't like this setup here. And I did some weird stuff in here. That... Anyways, so yeah, you'll see when I use the spectrum here that there's like almost always some like bass tone having a party over here. You can hear it when I'm taking it away. So what I like to do... Wow. And again, I'm just going to do what I did on the other one. And 
And I'm going to go ahead and add a base to go with that. So it's just going to be like... And then copy that to a sub, but you can hear how it's like... It's like pumping, so basically all you got, like, for the sub, you'd have to um, do like... Versus without that. You can make it like louder much quicker. And uh, yeah, that's usually how I EQ my basses. Nope. Wrong one right here. Is you uh, take away stuff around the 200 hertz area because that's where the snare goes. And you already have a side chain. So it really emphasizes like the snare and stuff. But that, that's where all the fundamental stuff is between like 110 and 200. So when you have synths and stuff being played on top of that, because you can see here on this, this line that goes down, this is the 200 line. The, where my cursor is, this thing right here, all the way down, that's the 200 line. So if we go look at like a synth from like Massive or anything really and just play like a wave. And throw in like a fat, like a equalizer. I'm playing a saw wave with a bass tone. And you can see it's got a subtone here. And it's got its it's like primary fundamental tone after the subtone right right here. Um yeah, and it's, actually this might be better with a saw wave. And it moves up, right? So you kind of want to get this whole area. And you're going to be cutting the bass. Even on like a higher played instrument. So something that would be... And you can see their fundamental stuff's all the way like around 300, right? But you would cut all the basses from this stuff too. So say you had this being played over and over again. And you want to put an ARP on it. It's too fast. Look at this ARP. It's got different, it's actually in different areas um, of the, 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 of here. No. What I'm basically trying to say is you gotta like make all your base yes it's kind of take away that stuff from the bases that is going to be too loud if you like all the frequencies in a base that are too loud when 
so in this 200 ish area you want to take those away because you don't want to be too loud for everything else being played at the same time um or it might just be too loud or you get rid of what's called mud which is basically like a sound just sounds too like deep Like there was a ridiculous amount of subtones there. So I played a sub on top of that. That's just unnecessary. So then if I but if I equalize it. Then it is kinda of necessary. That's what I'm saying. Basically just um You wanna you wanna do sub cuts around two hundred to make room for your sub because if you look at the sub it's all being played. Like this, in this area. And this is the 200 line. So as long as you're playing sub like where it's supposed to be. Then you want to make sure that this stuff, if actually let's line them up vertically like this. See how the cut's like made in the right spot. Um, although you do want some stuff in there, kind of like a little bit of artifacts, but you could you could always make this like a twenty four cut, so it's like cleaner. If you looked at the um, master now. And like, look what happens if I take away this. There's like all this extra, there was all this extra stuff here. That starts to sound better if you take it away, but obviously you can't really do that on a master track because things get like that's just bad mixing so then you want to do it per instrument make sure everything want to work wants to work together if you want to you can even like cut this but that would just stop you from playing like higher stuff so yeah all right thanks for watching bye